it's very, very advantageous to spare time to worship. Um, when you understand that you don't own your life, that you can drop dead anytime, that your being alive is credited to, to the mercy of God, you will love to fellowship in his presence. Fellowshipping brings incredible, valuable opportunity. Um, the person that will have become the, uh, the, who is the highest uh, Navy officer in, Af in Nigeria, that's the chief of Naval Staff. He was just the next to become the chief of Naval Staff when, the, for some reason, you know, the politics in that country was retired. We got to know each other in the church. And at that time in the 90s, when they wanted to ordain us, you know, I, I was the one that bought, I bought the suit for my ordination. I bought the same suit for him. But everything that we used for the ordination, I bought it because I was better off then. But eventually he became almost, he became an admiral in that nation. The journey started from fellowship. One of the owners of First Registrar in Nigeria, who I can count to be, I mean, I mean, the, the house that he built 19, 2009 that I went to dedicate, I, I, the one that he called from the U.S. to come and dedicate this house in Victoria and Lagos, it was built for $450 million that time. We knew each other in the church and we built upon the relationship in the church. There's so much reward in fellowshipping. You may not experience it immediately. It provides opportunity for integration. We integrate. That's why I tell some of you, including my ministers, don't come to the church. Don't gaggle in and gaggle out. Don't just treat church, church like microwave. A church is where you get relaxed, you integrate, you receive new ideas, you get new connection. You don't come to church and rush out. You don't rush out of the presence of God. You are rushing out into the world to do what? It is in the church people build professional network and personal networks. Singles connectivity is more easy in the church than the Facebook. At least I've seen about three or four marriages now and I will ask them, how did you meet? They say we met on the Facebook. And when trouble comes, they will go and face Facebook. There is a platform where God is the foundation where the Holy Spirit is the guidance. So if you're a sister, you are getting to the age of marriage, where you can find your church is in the fellowship with brethren. I pray as we embrace this art of fellowship, and you know, fellowshipping is contagious. The more the merrier, you know. When you, we are many, we are more stronger. Um, that's just a quick uh, encouragement before I go into my message. On Monday, the Lord gave me a message for the church, and I thought, well, this is a good message. Uh, let's talk about what? Sat down, prayerfully prepared the message on let's talk about what? And then on Thursday morning, I think, uh, I don't know the day where that you quickly dash out that you wanted to get something left me on the dining table. And then I got another message, the way of the prodigal. And I sat down and began to look at what is the way of the prodigal. The way of the prodigal started from frustration. He was frustrated. There are two children in the house. And usually in Israel, the inheritance of the family belongs almost 100% to the first child. And out of frustration, he said, look, I need to get some. And that's how 
people get frustrated from the church because of one reason or the other. They become, they go the way of the prodigal. And I was preparing to preach this message. And just yesterday, I just came back from Chicago in the morning. And then here comes another message. Direct your focus to what the end will be. Or direct your focus towards the end. It's okay, I, I think I will pick that off yesterday. Direct your focus towards the end. Ecclesiastes 7, 8 to 10. Message translation. Endings are better than beginning. The end of anything, whether relationship, whether business, it's better than the beginning thereof. Sticking to it is better than standing out. Don't be quick to fly off the handle. Anger boomerangs. You can't spot a fool by the lumps on his head. You can spot a fool by the lumps on his head. Don't always be asking, where are the good old days? Wise folks don't ask questions like that. Brethren, to gain victory in life, to accomplish great things, and enjoy self-fulfillment may not actually be good at the beginning. It may not be good at the beginning. It may look messy at the beginning. It may look discouraging at the beginning. Almost 20 years ago when this church, we were, we were the old church, <laughs> and I just came, this rookie man from our rookie preacher from Africa, you know, though I've spent a year in Canada before I was transferred. And there was a little shaking in that old church. And due to ego and arrogance of some, some of my ministers. And some of them decided to leave the, the mission. They left the church. It was a bad time. One of them met one of my serving ministers and asked, Hey, how many of you are left in Winner's Chapel now? This question reveals that you, you, you are not agreeable with what's going on. It's not compulsory that when you come to church, you must be agreeable with every decision. You have more than 300 people then in the church. So 300 ideas. So that you are not agreeable with a decision doesn't mean you have to shut down the church. You have to pray for the church to be shut down. But believe me, we were wasn't stronger. Because if you, they looked down on us because many churches were closing. Things were very hard that time. But if it is of God, it stood clear that God was with us. Today is a different story. They see us, they meet us in town. They knew we have not deceived anybody. We have preached the true gospel of Jesus. I was telling some people this morning, I said, is this, is this gospel easy? This gospel of Jesus was never easy during his, in, during his days. The gospel of anyone that will follow me must forsake his father, must forsake his son. I said, what kind of nonsense is that? It was never easy. But God saw us through because better when you stand on the truth, the end is always better. In the ministry of Jesus Christ, a time came when many disciples left him. But God did not abandon Jesus' project. Of Jesus, it was abandoned. So when people come and say, so so person has abandoned you, I said, because I resemble my Jesus. 
If there's no truth in you, people will be following you. When you are a liar and you deceive them and you manipulate them. Truths are not easy to follow. But it is in the end that will justify the means. If it does not justify it in this particular world, hell and eternity is waiting at the end. One will belong to either of the two. Folks, we must recognize that the most important things in life are not quickly completed and may be tough. The most important things in life are not quickly completed and may be tough. But focusing on the end is very, very paramount to our success. The things that really matters, that ends well, require commitment. Somebody say commitment. The things that matters, that we end well, also require determination. Somebody say determination. The things that really matters, that we end well, also require discipline. You know, when we, if I pick this one after the other, I take the word commitment, we can, we can run that for another one, two or three Sundays, and I pick the word uh, and determination, we can run that one also for another few days, and I pick the word discipline, that is spiritual discipline, time discipline, uh, um, uh, stewardship discipline. There are discipline that makes you qualify to stand out. It is not always easy to live the Christian life if you want to end well. Nor is it always easy to remain at a difficult job or to remain faithful and constant in our marriages. I have a son who has been very, very committed in the church. We see him every time, every day. In the recent time, he told me my first, my first uh, uh, shift starts. I, I leave home 5 o'clock every day or so. And then I end around 5, go to the next factory. And then that takes me to 8.30 in the evening. I adjust this on a daily basis. I said, is it compulsory? He said, Dad, I have to keep my job. There is no special allowance for what I'm doing other than the fact that I need to be abreast with the requirement of sustaining my job. It's not easy to remain at a difficult job or remain faithful and constant in every endeavor, including marriage, without commitment determination and discipline. Fewer and fewer couples honor the promise to remain faithful and loyal in their marriages until then. Very few things are breaking. I'm supposed to, to go intervene in an, in an issue of marriage on my own because that's my ministry. You don't see me at home sometimes. I go, uh, I, go I didn't plan to be in Chicago. I just told my protocol few minutes notice and we are, we are on our way. I wanted to travel five hours to sit down with a couple to say, look, don't do it that way. It can't work. You won't end well. As I was planning, I received, I received a letter yesterday from the parents of one of the couples telling me, we heard you are coming to resolve this matter. Don't come. We don't expect you to come. We don't need you to come. It's beyond solution. The parents... And that's why it is very critical to note that you can marry a bad lady, but don't ever pray to get a bad in-law. I was in a city called Kaduna in Nigeria, a very young boy. My sister is about 70, 76 or 77 now. Yes, why I, I am 66, about 11 years older than I. She takes care of me. I will go to their house with 11, I mean, 10 people, five people to eat almost every day. They were doing fine in Kaduna. I was a student of a college. You see, all this hospitality that I love to do, I started it from a young one. And I've troubled 
people that knows me. If you know me, you know trouble. Because anytime I'm coming to your house, I come with six or seven people. When I was drinking, I would bring them to my house. We would drink, we would eat. I don't know what they used to feel after I've left that. This boy, he, he cannot even think that. You are coming to drink, to eat. You will pack about four or five people with you again. And when I mean drink, I mean alcohol. Because some of you will not know that time. And so one day, the husband used to curse, curse my sister in my face. He would say, they, don't they didn't treat you. They didn't do this. They, he, he came from one part of Africa that they, cursing is part of their language. But now they have changed it. They can say, thunder will kill you and this thing will do you. So, <laughs> My sister called me one day that, don't you, is your friend. You go out, you drink together, you go to party together. Can't you tell your friend that you should not treat your sister that way? Find it difficult. So one day I got to my sister and said, well, I was waiting for you to come. I just came back from school to come and eat. So I was waiting for you to come. I'm packing out of this house today. I can't stand it again. I said, where are you going? She said, don't my father have a house? I said, I'm sorry, sister. You see, that house, if they begin to share a room there, it will not take all of us. Some of us will peer up in those rooms. If you live here, you are outside room. I will send you out of my father's house. You can't come there. If you have any other place that you want to go, you can go. Enjoy it. See, if that woman would have been wicked, she could have poisoned me. That this is the only hope I have. This is the only cousin. Because uh, our father is our first son. Today, they became born again. Their children grew up with Bishop Abioye in Kaduna. The children of my sister stay in the house of Bishop Abioye in Kaduna. They got wedded from his house. They are enjoying themselves. Because better is the end than the beginning thereof if you follow God's method. Praise the Lord. Fewer and fewer couples honor the promise to remain faithful and loyal in their marriages. Even when churches go through difficult times, some members leave. This is a time when people fail to follow through with their commitment to follow Christ. They will have an excuse. People murmur, snub the pastor, ignore ig what they call hard messages from the pastor, ignore, disobey the pastor's instructions to follow through the commitment in church. God is watching. God sees us. He need you to be disciplined. He need you to pay the price of fellowship. What? We, we thought we owns the end. You, you, many of us assume that things will continue the way it is. Not all that guilt us are gold. And for, for some of us, do not ever allow challenge, affliction, rejection, mockery, and false allegation to destroy your hope in Christ. If I uh, will have allowed that, this church will not be where it is. When I first came from Canada and I preach on Sunday, before I get to Canada, before I, because we live in Canada, I leave the church around 1 30, 2 o'clock. Before I drive down to Windsor in Canada, my CEO, my boss will have called me and say, Hey, they called that your message is too hard today. That was 2002, 2003. And he said, that, hey, be encouraged. Uh, tell that guy he should mellow down with his messages. When I know what brought me to Christ, God humbled me before I knew what God can do. God can strip you of your pride in the seconds. All the things you are boasting of, the big house, the money, you can see the money and you'll be lying down sick and you'll not be able to touch one of the things that you think you have labored for. 
The day you realize that you don't own your body, that's the day you will change your approach to God. What are the principles that guide us into a great ending? I will just share one or two, then we'll close. One principle that helps people to a successful ending is patience. Somebody say patience. Be patient with one another. If your wife is bad, be patient with her. Pray for her. If your husband is not behaving, be patient with her. If your pastor <laughs> messages are too hard, be patient and be looking for eternity. Life is about taking a day at a time and making the best of it. Not only taking a day at a time, make the best of your time. God recurs the use of your time on a daily basis. Wait on the Lord. Make the best of it. And God sees you through. In my father's house, we just came from Ghana. And my mother has bought beautiful shoes for me. Some days, I will not see one out of the pair of shoes for a long time. The day I will see one of it, they have, they have put this nail, that, the nails, like the nail that they used to nail Jesus. They will nail it on one of the shoes. There was a particular year in the, in the secondary school, I, I, I did eight positions. Eight, not first. Eight positions. And I got home. And almost half of my father's children did not greet me. And uh, we may fail, though, but we are happy to fail. Uh, some of them are saying that. Just for eight, eight positions, not first. I was going for an interview. I pack all my certificates to be going for an interview. In the night, eight o'clock, I pack all my certificates to go for an interview to enter the technical college. And before I woke up in the morning, one of my father's children has taken all the, the certificates that I'm taking for the interview. It was when I'm about to leave the house and I checked my bag. So all the certificates that I need to present to get into the interview is missing. I went to the call all of them, they begged them. One of my friends said, I should go and take a cutlass. That I should drive all of them from the house with a cutlass. And I don't have that, that I'm not packaged like that. Because of that single act, I was supposed to do mechanic in the technical college of war. By the time I repackage, going to the, go to my secondary school to get duplicate of certificates, the class was filled up. And they asked me to do panel beating. That's what led me. Say, no more class. If you have come in the day of the interview, we'll have given you this course. But that pushed me to panel beating course. Then they call it light vehicle repairs course to give it American status. The Nigerian status is panel, panel beta. I didn't have a choice. I went to this course and I became the best in the class. We didn't have instructors to teach us. I was reading to, to teach my classmates. The first year I have secondary school drop out who did not pass well, who came to the Tenka College. I came from modern school. Modern school is like middle school also. And so we respect those who came from high school. More than half percent, half of us in the class came from, they graduated from high school, but I came from middle school. So I thought I cannot even meet them in terms of performance. The first year, I was second. The first time we did, a, the first semester, I was second. The second semester, I became first. The third semester in the first session, I became first. Second year, First, first, first. Third year, first, first, first. Throughout in the panel building. And so, they didn't have instructions. They're supposed to employ me. And then on those state, they said, you are not from our state. You, we can't employ you. So, I went to your state, 1977, 77, 78. And I became an instructor. When I was employed by Pujo Otoba Nigeria Limited, I was the only one who has... The highest certificate in panel beating and mechanical engineering. The only one. When I was in UTC Motors, the only one that has the highest certificate in panel beating, which is a live vehicle body repairs, and also in mechanical engineering. 
what the enemy thought for evil, they didn't know the end. They were pushing me to become a specialist. Not every mockery is not allowable. Many of the mockery that people mock you for whom you are is allowed for you to be focused. Rejection does not matter if God is with you. Rejection actually point. I told somebody, some, I was telling somebody this week, I said, affliction is good. He said, why? I said, affliction points your eyes to the only one who, can, who knows your end. May the Lord give you understanding. So patience is required if you want to end well. James 1 and verse 4. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Don't get out of that relationship prematurely. Some people have been in this church several years. Suddenly they will say something, turn their head, they are not coming again. They are going to start afresh. So what kind of mentality is that? Don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become delivery. Don't run away from the pains of pregnancy. So you become matured and well developed. Not deficient in any way. Impatient is usually a sign of immaturity. If you don't give up your hopes and dreams, then there will always be a good ending. But impatience will land you into trouble. Romans 12 and verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patience in tribulation. Continue instant in prayers. In other words, tribulations, when you continue in it, it directs your attention to who can handle the tribulation. That is in prayers. A few weeks ago, I brought my bed to this altar. How many days did I ask my mommy? No, you are, you are trying, woman. Because we have a big house. The children have left. I will still leave you and come to the altar. Then I was here for three days. Just bring my bed here. Sleep here. I will not be picking calls. Some people say, Pastor, we are calling you. When I'm recharging myself, how will I pick a call for somebody who, who does not know whom to call when he has problems? And there God opened my, my, my eyes and showed me certain things that is happening in life. Some people... And I call them and tell them, this is what God is telling me about you. Tribulation will drive a genuine Christian to the place of prayers, not a place of grumbling and complaining. Because you understand, you, you understand who brought the tribulation anyway. In Exodus chapter 2, Moses was impatient he killed a man, and that killing led to 40 years of postgraduate work as a servant to his in-law. Years later, in Numbers chapter 20, Moses became impatient again, smoothed the rock, and forfeited his labor of 40 years. How will I labor and labor and use impatience to throw my labor away? Somebody say impatience. Here at the end of Moses, in Deuteronomy 3, 26 to 27, message translation. Oh, God was still angry with me because of you. Don't allow anybody to make you do what you don't intend to do because God is there. God doesn't want to hear your excuses. God wants to see your responses. I didn't come to church because wala, Pastor Wala is too much. Whom are you deceiving? You are deceiving yourself. Are you coming to church because of me? Daddy Gio said somebody came to meet him and said, our daddy, the general of us here, said, uh, I've been serving you all these days. Daddy said, uh, I thought we are serving God together. I didn't know you are serving me. 
If you are coming to church because of pastor, you are the most miserable. And that's why we come to meeting because I'm not home, you won't see anybody there. Because they are miserable, they are serving men. They are fake. God told Moses, he said, climb to the top of Mount Pisgah and look around, look west, look north, look east. Take in the land with you, with your own eyes. He said, take a good look of the land. You will see this land with your eyes. You will not get there. Labor of 40 years. Only because of impatience. Smooth. He didn't, he didn't abuse anybody. He didn't insult anybody. What he just thought, did was that God said, speak to the rock and he smooth the rock. And God said, because you did that, you won't end well. You won't get to your destination. You see how many times you have gone the wrong way. And if God is treating his friend, Moses, like that, you know that it's not possible for you to reach your destination. No? Except God is partial. No. And the reason why mercy is needed Do not be like the horse and the moon. In Psalm 32 and verse 9. New Living Translation. Said, do not be like a senseless horse uh, or a moon that needs a beat and bridle to keep it under control. Now let me give you an explanation. The horse is impulsive and always want to rush ahead. The horse, they want to rush ahead. And the Bible says, do not be like a horse, senseless horse. But the moon is stubborn and has ten tendency to hold back. I'm tired. It's raining today, Jerry. This man, this foolish man, pastor, will not understand. <laughs> Don't mind him. He didn't understand America very well. They just brought him from nowhere to be preaching to us here. I won't go today, Jerry. There's nothing you can do. A moon, stubborn. And the Bible said, don't be like it. And don't be like a horse who is senseless. Rush to go out. He comes to church, he will rush it out. No fellowship. Including the most beautiful sisters here, they don't fellowship. They are foolish. Your beauty cannot fetch you, husband. It's fellowshipping. Buy biscuit when you are coming to church. Look for that good brother. Give him. Say, so let's sit down. Let's discuss what pastor preached today. Let, is, I said this all the time. You think I'm a fool? When I first met my wife, I had a flat tire. My wife pushed me aside. He said, I also can change it. A woman, a woman changing uh, a, a boy you just met. Flat tire. And I was looking at his back. I said, this one will be good as a wife. He's looking at her back. I said, this one will be good as a wife. When I visit her at school, in our school, she won't allow us to go to can't, can't, anywhere to spend money. She has, she has fried meat, fried everything that she will eat for one, one, three months. So when I go, she said, no, don't waste your money. I have food in the hostel. I said, which kind of food? Don't worry, you will eat it. Don't let us waste money. So everything she was doing is to make sure that I capture this man. Now, a young man that we just met in the church, you know, God is prompting it to your heart. This could be a good husband. And he's saying, hey, Kidding me? Hi. Hi. Somebody that you, you could deliberately stay at the gate of the church is coming to meet you. Hi, how are you? Come, welcome. So, <laughs> you're a new member here. Eh? I've been seeing you for some few days now. Eh? You, 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 you'll, be, you'll be a pastor. And you'll be a potential pastor. And the person will not be crying. She will get, he will get home. He will not be able to sleep. That, that sister said I will be a potential pastor. Somebody say fellowshipping. Fellowship. Don't be a senseless horse. 
apply it to your situation. In which area do you rush out? Is it in the presence of God? Do you rush out? In decision making, you will say, no, we can't do it. I will do what I feel, man. Patience is good. Well, let me take it a little more. Both attitude of being stubborn and being hasty to take decisions are outside the will of God. Patience allow you for God to speak to you. You will hear people say, oh, I stay longer in church. On my way home, I saw a very terrible accident at claim life, particularly in Nigeria. And you say, thank God it could have been me. Stay longer in the church. If there's nowhere to be, it's God's presence. You have security. You can meditate. God himself is not in a hurry. Oh. God is not in a hurry. God can grow a mushroom overnight. But it will take years for God to grow an oak tree. It depends. God took 30 years with mockery, with rejection, with slavery, with false allegation to get Joseph ready for the prime minister's position. 30 years of rejection by his family, 30 years of mockery by his family, 30 years of slavery for no offense, went to prison all in the 30 years to get Joseph ready for prime minister position. Even God himself is not in a hurry with some people. God invested 80 years preparing Moses for 40 years journey and yet Moses failed. David suffers homelessness, great suffering, leaders of hooligans after his anointing and waited almost 12 years to become a king. God is not in a hurry. Our Lord Jesus Christ was prepared for 30 years for a three years ministry because God is not in a hurry. If God isn't in a hurry, then do not sacrifice the permanent for the immediate. Many of us are sacrificing the permanent, the permanent place of rest, eternity, ending well for the immediate gratification of my job. My job, I'm weak. And the middle, you know. Those days when I first came to this church, we meet in the church almost every day. For some of you are old, quiet, I mean, prayer, prayer ministry will meet on Monday to come and pray. We have Tuesday as Bible studies, Thursdays as free clinic. Some people will put their meetings on Wednesday. Friday, there was a time this woman here, can you stand up, Mrs. Ngozi Iduma? She's one of the members that are inherited in this church. She came to me and said, Pastor, if you want us to be doing well in this church, we must be meeting every Friday. Now, VJ. They do that in this church. They do that in that church. Please sit and God bless you. So we almost meet every day in this church. And then because of lukewarmness, complain, let me please them. Don't let them kill me. Don't let them throw stones at me. From those meetings, we turn it to only one meeting on Wednesday. Tell me, if the past one month you have been in a Wednesday meeting, and if God comes tomorrow, you say he should take you home when you are not interested in this business. God himself is not in a hurry. Why are you in a hurry to be rich? Riches, they have wings. Money have wings. It can fly away. Pastor, leave me alone for now. I'm facing, you know, you know, I'm facing my, I have my stuff. Stuff, who give you that stuff? Who allow you to wake up to see that stuff? Some will say, if it's not, if it's not, if it's not online, it's not a service. Leave me if it's not online. I, I shared testimony here last week uh, before I, I traveled. 
So I went to a church. And you know, it's a testimony, and I got to share it. I went to a church. And God asked me to lay hands on every one of them in that meeting, about 19 of them. He got home, and the woman being came out of his body, out of his bosom, in a trance. His old friend that he has not seen for almost it's either 15 or 19 years walk out of his body and walk out of the room. And he came the following day crying. Crying. I said, Pastor, why are you crying? He said, I didn't know that my coming to that church will solve a long time issue. It can happen online. You go with your problem, you die with your problem online. Online have limitation in the amount of issues they could solve for you. In the presence of God. Even during the days of uh, the, the time in the wilderness, God created his presence to go with them. He said, build me an ark that, that will signify that my presence is going. God is interested in physical presence. Many of you will never get to where you want to be in life because you are not cook enough. You are not prepared enough. The fire has not, you know, it's only here they, they go to, you, you are treating God like steak house that you ask and not well cook. You'll be eating the steak with, with, with blood. Steak meat with blood. Many of you are steak meat with blood, not well cook. Because the fire that will cook you you run away from it on a daily basis. How would you be sweet in the mouth of God when you are half cook? Say, uh, why can't we turn this to online? Turn that to online. Very soon I was, I, I had sleepless nights today when I imagined how many churches are closing. Go to London and went to London. Churches are closing in London. Many of our sisters, churches are closing. And a reasonable Christian will sleep well. Then you belong to the devil. You see your father's business going down. And you are comfortable. And we don't have any other choice. There is hell. There is heaven. And you want to belong to that heaven. And you are happy that churches are closing. And you are one of those that is making churches close. Because you are not at all. To the population needed for the churches to grow. I was burdened in my spirit. I couldn't sleep overnight. And God started giving me scriptures. A good tree will produce a good fruit. The bad one, their fruit are sour. Many of you are sour in the mouth of God. And he said, any tree that did not produce a good fruit, I will cut them away. Do you know many believers have been cut away from the presence of God? They are just there like Saul. For 12 years, Saul was ruling Israel, but God was not there. Many of them say, I will cut you away, throw you into the fire, because you are occupying a space that you are not fruitful to. So I'll take you away from that space. So I came, I wanted to lead that prayer this morning. Now let's pray. Any tree that God did not plant in our church, take them away so that good people can come. But I was afraid to lead that prayer. So all I can ask for is mercy. In the book of Hebrew, I said, do not sacrifice the permanent for the immediate, for the immediate comfort, immediate complacencies. Hebrews 6, 11 to 12. He said, our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts. New Living Translations. What does he mean by loving others? Fellowshipping, coming. Uh, there was a time I have a vision that every member of our church should have three-way, three-way directional life. You see that my, at my work? I branch through the church. I go home. And there are a few ministers that are doing that now. They are going to work. They will come to church first. 
what is there to be done, they will look at it. Then from work, from church, they will go to their work. And their work, they are going home, they will come to church. With the devil, we serve him from work to be a parlor on a daily basis, from be a parlor to home. On Saturday, if I have to go to work on Saturday, we will start with be a parlor because I have to knock one or two to work. So that same spirit brought me into the church. And that's why devil was disappointed when we left. When some of you left, devil said, when you were here, you were not useful. So I know where you are going, you can be useful. Our great desire is to, for you to keep on loving others as long as you last. How would you love others that you have no fellowship with? In order to make certain that what you hope for will come through. I wanted to reveal certain things to us as a church today. But because I have not discussed with my ministers, I decided to keep it to give them the honor. A young man saw a need in the church, outside the church, and he went to look for the contractor without discussing with the pastor and completed the job. If you are going behind the church, you will see two green poles to protect, to protect the gas line. Some of you have been in this church with me. We built this church together since 2008 that we opened this church, the new church. You saw it. You saw a need. But it is not your father's house. And we are showing thousands of money to community uh, family meeting, uh, uh, association meeting. I made somebody an head of department. I will show you those maybe next week. I made him an head of department and he went to buy one of the best, um, what was that clothes? For every member of the department. So this is my father's house. Mindset must change. Mentality must change for us to enjoy the benefit of God's presence. In order to make certain that what you owe for will come, to, come true. In order to be certain that your hope in life must come true, you must love each other. You must fellowship together. Then you will, not become, you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Many of you are indifferent to the things of God. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises. Follow the example of those who will inherit God's promises. What are their examples? Dedication, commitment, discipline. Also in Hebrews 10, 26, New Living Translation says, patience and endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's way. Now, patience is not good enough. Enduring is the worst. It means <laughs> while you are patient, you are enduring some pains, some pains of Why? Then if you know, this morning I was telling you, I don't, if I don't go to heaven with anybody, I will go with you. No matter your pain, just follow me. If I marry somebody else, I will be in trouble. Because the way, this woman, sometimes she will wake up with pains. And then, instead of me to see sleep at home, I will say, we don't have any other business. Very soon, Jesus will come and these pains will be over. And you know, Jesus can come in two ways. He can come in the way of death or in the way of rapture. In whichever way, it must be seen in us that we have put our best.
as I close. The big question is, why has God made me to be experiencing all this? There are some of us who, you, you feel frustrated for the things that you are going through with your children, with your husband, sometimes with your wife. And you say, why, why, why has God made me to be like this? The answer is, God has not made you, but he's making you. God has not made you. He's not finished with you yet. That is making you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians 4 10, New Living Translation. It said, through suffering, our body continue to share in the death of Jesus. To the world, he didn't say through your words. He didn't say through your comfort, through your engineering background, through your being a medical doctor or whatever. He didn't say it's through that that you share about Jesus. Dead, he said, through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies through suffering. And when you stand there, gossip about me because I said you should do the right thing, and God is writing it down against you. I love you. And I want us to be there together whenever he comes. If you want to know me proper, go and ask my wife if I've ever speared her when it comes to the things of God. Sometimes I will do what I need to do. I will be asking myself, Ah, Funshaw, please, have you been considering enough with this woman? There was a day college that came to meet me, this man, this young man here. He said, what you did to mommy today, if you try it again next time, I will gang up against you. That's not exactly the way you say it because you respect me a lot. Because I used my evangelical calling on mommy and he was not very far away. He noticed it, he noticed it and he drew me aside. Yeah? That's our mother in this church. Be careful. Otherwise, I will tell the church. <laughs> but I did it for my conscience to be clear. If I have to do it against Ethel, do it when Bolanle did something wrong and ignore it because it's my wife. That is what they call partiality. And I used to tell my wife, wait, sorry, we were, we were sitting down in the Bible college in 1994 in the postgraduate Bible college in Acme in Nigeria writing our final exam. Couples sat by each, each other. And I saw couples, they were doing the same thing. Can you answer number one? A. They will write it. Uh, you want to answer? What is answer for number two? And my wife said, Daddy, what is it? I said, mm, we will talk when we get home. I said, we will talk when we get home. And he looked at me. See this couple now. I said, ah, God is seeing them better. Am I wicked? Please, if you are the one that say yes, kindly stand up for recognition. You said it. See me after the service. And I tell you. No, you have to see me after the service. We need to talk. And I tell you. I would have asked you to stand up, but because of some domestic harmony, I won't know. It's a hard lesson for my wife, but I'm, I'm, I was teaching her how to be determined, committed, and be disciplined. I am not perfect. See, everything I tell you on this altar doesn't make me a perfect man. I am also a work in progress. But we need to tell each other. As I'm telling you, I'm telling myself. So each time you get out of here and say, I'm, I'm preaching you, I'm preaching myself. Because there are certain things I need to change. Ariel Lua, they asked her during the days when she was in the children's school, that who is your mentor? And she said, it's my dad. Because she saw Christ in me. She saw determination in me. She saw commitment in me. And one day my wife spoke to me the way I don't like at all. And I busted into this kind of... Uh, 
loud voice. And Eriolua was near. Immediately, Holy Spirit prompted me. That's the guy who said you are a mentor. That's how to be a mentor. And I went to meet my wife in the room. And I kneeled down the Nigerian way. I said, sorry for shouting on you. Has he taken anything from me? That offense had been wiped off from God. Because I acknowledge my weaknesses. The challenge you have is that each time I tell you you are doing something wrong, you get out of here angry. Anytime you get out of here angry, devil goes out with you. Instead of asking for God grace, asking God for grace, you will go and gather together and say to God, God, Pastor, so let come. Did you hear what he said again? It's because we didn't come to Sadok yesterday. That's why he came yesterday and started lambaxing us. And God is starting it down against you. How many of you love me? You love what I'm doing? How many of you pray with me? Pray for me this morning. Can I see your hands up? And that's why I mean, we know. You won't do it. And you say you love me. Charity begins at home. If you love me, you will pray for me. You love me, you will call me and say, there's a sister that was always every week now, the sister will send me a text and she said, if nobody prays for you, pastor, know that I am praying for you here. And he said, your second daughter, you just claim the right. She claimed the right. Now all of you that are boasting, I mean, I mean, it's my daddy, it's my daddy. Somebody is saying that I am the only one. Let me close. Has anyone here gained something today? All right, let me close. Oh. In making, in God making you, God should be seen as involved in every of our decisions. George McDonald said, in whatever man does, without God, he must either fail miserably or succeed more miserably. <laughs> I don't know whether uh, we, I'm speaking English here. Hello? He said, in whatever a man does without God, he said, he must either, he put it boss, either fail miserably or succeed more miserably. It means, see, when you are succeeding on the wrong direction, you will succeed miserably. Oh, I'm, I'm in America within a short time. I've bought three, four houses. I've done this. I've done that. I, I'm owner of this business. I'm owner of this house. If it is done at the detriment of what God wants you to do, you will succeed miserably. And that's what McDonald is saying here. Anything done, and you can ask yourself, is God is the, in, is in what I'm doing? I'm not coming to church regularly. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. It's affecting my, my performance in the church. And you are succeeding. McDonald, I think, I think George McDonald is the same McDonald, right? The one who found the McDonald, right? Is it George or another, George, another McDonald? Uh, can succeed and still be miserable. Now, let me just tell you five God's method, method and we'll do one. One or two prayer points. God's method of succeeding. Number one, the word. Follow the word. What is God telling you in this situation? Don't get angry at what pastor is saying. Whenever pastor challenge you, his strong words, go back and say, God, what do you have for me? Here, God's word. Number two, prayer. Go back to God and put it in prayers. God, help me. Help me out. My job is not allowing me. Help me. I have so much challenges affecting me. Help me. Prayer. Number three, witnessing. Is your life a good witness? Can you invite your, 
workplace uh, uh, colleague to the church? Can anybody follow you to the church? Is your life a good example to your family, to your in-law? If they see you and say you're a minister in the redeemed Christian church of God, they say it's a deacon. She's a deacon. Deacon, deacon for what? Deaconess is for what? I don't know. That's why people go and say redeemed. They are just an ordaining anybody. Are you one of those that, has, that is calling, that is making them saying ordination is for anybody? And you tell an ordained minister, come and do this and say, I don't have time. Who ordains you? God or man? Witnessing. For sacrifice. Are you ready to pay the price? For which God has called you into the ministry. For which God saves you. You were not born where you don't know Christ. You were not born into Abali's hope. You had, God by his mercy made you to have opportunity into the gospel. Are you ready to pay the price? Then lastly, suffering. Will you deny him because of little suffering? 2 Corinthians 4, 17. For our present trouble are small and won't last very long. It will not last very long. It can last but not very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweigh all the suffering. A glory that outweigh. You know, the glory is an end thing. It's not a thing of the beginning. It outweigh all the challenges. It outweigh all the sufferings. Ephesians 2, 2, to 9, 2, 9 to 10 says, we don't play the major role. If we did, we'll probably go around bragging that we have done this whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does the book. Making and the saving is in the hands of God. He can take you to where you least expected. He will do what you least expected. In conclusion, in order to finish well, live to please God. And old Romans Proverbs say that when a pilot does not know what path he is heading for, no wind is the right wind. The moment the plane took off and you don't know where you are going, the wind is pushing you with speed, but it's pushing you nowhere. Let's rise up on that.